Would you like to know about the place on Tasmania's east coast that the Lonely Planet calls one of the world's hottest destinations? Well, keep listening and all will be revealed. But first, we start in St Helens on George Bay, which is the game fishing capital of Tasmania and where we had one of the best meals with the best views we've ever had. Then we take you with us to the famous Lonely Planet location of Binalong Bay and the Bay of Fires. We describe just how spectacular this area is with its white powder sand, beautiful blue water and fire orange rocks and boulders. Lyle shares just how those boulders get their colour. And after St Helens, we drive to Bishano, which is best known for its penguins, fish and chips, and of course, the blowhole. We tell you about some of the amazing wineries you can visit in this area and one of our all-time favourites. And finally, we share the most spectacular views of Oyster Bay and the world-famous Wineglass Bay in Freycinet National Park. We tell you about the hikes you can do and the superb luxury accommodation nestled in the trees right on the edge of Oyster Bay. Listen to the end where you hear what a stupid mistake we made at Freycinet Lodge and the pretty horrible reason Wineglass Bay got its name. Enjoy episode 48 as we continue our lap of Tasmania. Cheers! And welcome to the Beach Travel Wine Podcast. We are your hosts, I'm Leanne. And I'm Lyle, and this is the travel podcast for beach-loving, wine-drinking couples over 50. So if that sounds like you, grab yourself a drink, sit back, relax and listen as we go travelling the world one wine at a time. Cheers. Good morning, Lyle. Good morning, Leonita. Here we are um, back in the podcast studio to bring you the next part of our road trip around Tasmania. And um, if you haven't listened to the previous ones, you know, go back and and have a listen to them. We started way back in, in Hobart and we've made our way uh, now in this episode to St Helens on the east coast of Tasmania and we left the Tamar Valley which was how far did we drive? Yeah it went from Tamar Valley to St Helens is 175 kilometres. Now it does take a little bit longer you think oh that's only a couple hours but the roads are um, a little bit windy and yeah. pretty scenic and and so you know you you need to allow enough time to, yeah to without do that. stops you're probably looking at about two and a half hours really. sure yeah um st helens is the largest town on the northeast coast of tasmania so we got there pretty um pretty early and um, i'll tell you about the motel we got to in a minute but yeah so we, why did we choose st helens probably because it's the main town on the east coast right yeah pretty much i think we you got recommended by and it's a gateway Donna to some and of the gay. Gay. and yeah. it's a gateway to some of those places that we wanted to to go and have a have a look at so sure so yeah so what so what's the uh the history and and, and all the info about St Helens Donna? yeah well St St Helens is located on George's Bay a beautiful bay yeah it's known for its uh, game fishing yep. um, yeah. it's basically known as the capital uh, the game fishing, fishing capital. capital of Tasmania oh. uh, the town has a major fishing fleet which is sponsored by uh, the boat building, uh, ship chandlery businesses, and obviously tourism. Yeah, because everywhere you look in St Helens, it, it is on that bay and there's just ships and, and yeah. little wharfs and, yeah, you can you can actually walk around George's Bay, um, which which I did. Not, not all, like, up, you know, like up and around, which was a nice little way to look back at the city. Sorry, go on. <laughs> yeah, um, the, for the game fishing, the highly prized species include yellowfin, mm, tuna, yep. striped marlin, yes. striped tuna, Yum. and maca, mako shark. Um, now, I had a quick look on what it currently is to go out for the game fishing for the day. It's about four, $400 per person. And you do need a fishing license uh, if you're over 14. So, um, but, but that would include everything. You oh, know, yeah, that yeah. includes lunch, yeah. tea, coffee, um, yeah, all the, gear, all the fishing gear, yeah. everything like that. Sure. So, really, you know, for a day's outing, it's basically, yeah. and especially if you're keen, yeah. um, I think that's pretty good value. Now, St. Helens was first used as a whaling station in the early 19th century. When tin was discovered in the surrounding area in the 1870s, St. Helens became the shipping port for the mines. The town was named after St. Helens, Isle of Wight. Mm. The first Europeans to explore the St. Helens area was Tobias Furneaux. He was actually French, who sailed up the coast in 1973 
He named the southern point of George's Bay St. Helens Point. Tin was discovered uh, at Blue Tier in 1874. Suddenly, the port and the routes to the tin mines were awash with miners. Um, they say there was, a, you know, about a, over a thousand Chinese moved through that port. Listen, that guy's name, Furno. Yeah. Is that the name of the award-winning um, Chardonnay? Oh, it might be. It might be. Yeah. Might, you, uh, don't, don't, we can't leave too much uh, silence there. We, we're we're live. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough, fair anyway, enough. that's yeah. Where was what was that? That ever? was the one that won all the 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 best Chardonnay in the world or something. That's right. Remember? That's yeah. right. Yeah, I thought yeah. you said it was Ferno. Anyway, sorry, I stuck that a bit of a um. What do they call that? A, a, a spanner in the works there. You sorry, did. You sorry. did. You <laughs> did. You <laughs> did. You trained the thought. Sorry, yeah, darling. But I think that was basically in, wasn't it in Margaret River. I think. Oh, you're right. Okay. I think it was. Think, Let, let's look, yeah, you know, let's just forget all of that, guys. There was a bit, bit of a stretch there, yeah, but yeah. that doesn't matter. But <laughs> one on. of the reasons why you wanted to, to go and we were recommended is because of the beautiful beaches. And so not far out of St Helens. It's not a far drive at all. You sort of get to, to the, the township mm. and then you drive out to, uh, I suppose you go north, but it's yeah. only about 10, 15-minute drive. To been along. Bay. Okay. Well, before we do that, mm. can we go back to St Helens because I want to talk about where we stayed. Okay. And um, yeah, and and where we ate there. I just yeah, we can do that. Okay. Be right with you. So we stayed at the Quichi Motel. Yes. We and did. it was as you come into town, it's before you get into the main part of um, St Helens, it was just there on the left, and we stayed in a what they call a water view or a sea view room. And um, it was it was really cheap, you know, um, less than one hundred and fifty bucks for the night. We only were only yeah, I think it was about one hundred and twenty six. Mm. And it was really funny because we got there early, and um, normally when you get places early, they can be a bit, you know, well, it's not time to check in yet and stuff. But the the um, there was an older couple that were running the place. He was very happy that we got there early because yeah, he, we were the only check-in for the day. Yeah, and uh, he wanted to go down to the RSL club. So yeah, the yeah. sooner we checked in and, and he said, if there's any problems, don't ask me, I won't be here. You yeah. know, um, it's all, it's all talk, her fault. <laughs> talk, talk of the boss, which was his wife. So he yeah. was actually a bit of a character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know whether he was going down to the RSL for a bet or a beer. I wasn't sure. Probably but, both. Anyway, but he so, had a great personality. So what we did was we, we dumped our bags and because it was such a beautiful day, wanted to go for a bit of a, a wander. So as I was saying earlier, there's like a, we've got to cross the main sort of road into town and then there's a, a lovely little track. Um, and I've got some, a photo of, of the track around the um, George's Bay. And yeah, and just wandered around there and looked at the, the little jetties and the boats and the houses on the, you know, looking over the water and, and, and stuff. And then when you turn around to come back, you're looking at the little village. You can see the village and um, oh, the wharf area. And on the wharf area, there's um, some well-known restaurants and there's a um, the fish and chip shop, which is everybody's favourite apparently. Um, but we went to the, uh, for dinner, the wharf. Bar the wharf and, bar and kitchen. And the reason we chose that was it was right on the water. They specialise in seafood, obviously, and the views. Well, actually, if you remember, I didn't want to go there originally. Yes. And I think... Part of the reason was because it also had a takeaway area, and I sort of went to the assumption that you know, a, you know, a restaurant and with a takeaway, or maybe not. But then the place that we chose mm. that I wanted to go to that wasn't open that night, mm. so we went to the wharf bar and kitchen. Yes, and uh, I would say I was speechless how good the meal was. Yeah, it was, um, and we got a table, we it. you know, like. Um, at, right at the front, and it's and it's floor to ceiling glass. Yeah, that basically overlooks St George's Bay. Is it yeah. St George? Uh, well, George's Bay, yeah, St yeah. George's Bay. Yeah. Um, uh, depends where you come from. <laughs> uh, yeah, but seriously, um, absolutely cannot speak more highly of oh. the Wharf Bar and Kitchen, a beautifully appointed restaurant so overlooking nice. the bay yes. with floor. Yeah, I said that to ceiling to glass. Ceiling yeah. glass, and we were right on the edge, weren't we? Yeah, and then you could see all the boats and, and the you know fish in the water. And I have I have a really nice um, video of that and photos on 
on our website at beachtravelwine.com and um, go to the show notes for episode 48, which is this one, to, to see those. And also um, on our Instagram at beachtravelwine.com at the story highlights to Tasmania and you'll see the, the videos there. Now, the thing that about this place is there's basically oyster farms next to the restaurant, right? Yeah, yeah. It's called um, At Least 65 Oysters mm. and um, they're just, you know, so well uh, known in Tasmania. In city, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. just unbelievable. We couldn't believe the size of them, how, you know, uh, creamy they were. They were just magnificent. And on the menu they had like six styles. Yeah. They had and there were six chilled and there were six... Oh, I thought it was three bits. Okay, six of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, no, no, you're right. You're yeah. right. Sorry, I'm getting confused. Yeah. yeah, you get three chilled and three cooked. Um, so you get like the little tasting platter, which is what I think I had. Yeah, yeah. so it was, that's right. You yeah. did. Yeah, you did. I, I yeah. love them. I love oysters anyway they come. I just, I love them so sure. much. Sure, yeah. so. And that was like a really good start to the meal. Yeah. yeah. But and, then. But then um, I read, and I had never had. Mm. Uh, Luxa. Luxa before, and um, and I, th- you know, when over we're on holidays, I always, I don't know, I'm more inclined to try things that I hadn't have be- had before. Anyway, there was a seafood Luxa uh, on the menu, and as I said, I'd never had it before. Um, oh my god! Well, the, the waitress actually recommended. I think it was the special of the day, or you know, like so, yeah, and. Yeah, I had it as well, and it's we still we still talk about it as one of the nicest meals we've ever had. You know, so the oysters were like the the precursor, and then this laksa. Oh my gosh, it was you know with the, with so we're eating this this laksa, which is the creamiest. You know, the the sauce was just you know perfect with the background view of the sun setting. You know, over the bay with those the glass. Um, you know, floor to ceiling glass. It was just superb, wasn't it? Yeah. And I've got a funny feeling we were probably having a very, very nice East Coast cool climate wine. Definitely were. Besides the seafood um, and the beautiful bay at, at St Helens, the probably the main reason, well, most people go there, but we we went there was because of the w- world famous, basically, Binalong Bay and Bay of Fires, right? Correct. Yeah. So. Um, tell us a bit a, a bit about that because even uh, Lonely Planet have mentioned the old. Um, That's true, Lynn. Like the Bay of Fires, haven't That's they? True. <laughs> the Lonely Planet names the Bay of Fires as one of the world's hottest travel destinations. Mm, mm. So, um, so you drive from St Helens North to Binalong Bay. It's a little yeah, town, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And within that, Binalong Bay is the, the beginning of the Bay of Fires. Bay of the Fires. So the. Uh, and Bay of Fires extends from Binalong Bay to Easy Stone Point. Look, the with clean white beaches, clean, blue, yeah. clean white beaches, yeah. blue water, and granite rock. Yeah, and splashed with yes. orange lichen. Lichen, because I call it lichen, but Lance calls it lichen. Uh, the lonely, as I said, the lonely planet. They basically uh, named it as one of the hottest destinations. Look, it is beautiful. Yeah, and once again, I've got beautiful photos on our website, um, beachtrawine dot com, uh, episode forty eight. I think this one is. <laughs> I get so confused. Anyway, um, but yes, I couldn't stop taking photos of firstly, you know, the beach there at Binalong Bay, which all these houses look over, which is. You know, like I know everyone says the whitest sand, but it literally is. And then the beautiful, beautiful blue water is just um, just stunning. You know, you could look at it all day and the sand's so fine and beautiful. And then you sort of turn your head and you sort of see the beginning of these big rocks and they're, they're huge big boulders, right? Like they're, right. Yeah, they're not, um, yeah, they're not little pebbles. We're talking massive boulders and some are just, you know, ordinary coloured and then right next door, are these photos with this bright, fiery orange um, colour almost covered the whole, covering the whole rock, isn't it? So that's, and that's the, the lichen, lichen, whatever you want to call it, niche. Now, do you know what lichen is? Um, like, uh, yes, I do. Um, it's, you, were, you were, when we were talking <laughs> about know. this earlier, Lynn singing like a virgin. <laughs> like anyway, it. but that's, that's okay. I was, um, I know it's singing um, um, 
when we were talking about Benelong Bowler saying Benelong Day, Benelong Day. <laughs> And I, I begged him not to sing. and um, For obvious reasons. Yes. But anyway. anyway let's, well, quickly, tell so, people so we can uh, move on. Now, the... lichen are a complex life form that is a symbiotic mm. partnership of two separate organisms, the fungi and the algae. So that's yeah. what it is. Now, and as you... you said, it was basically, it's the seaweed that yeah. changes the colour. So, aren't you glad, listeners, that he, you know now it's symbiotic? Hey? Symbiotic, yep. Yeah. And um, and activities in this area, there's camping, boating, bird washing, fishing, swimming, bird surfing. Washing. Bird washing. <laughs> what did I say, bird washing? <laughs> but if you want, I mean, you can you wash can it. it. You can catch Yeah, if you can catch one, you can wash it. <laughs> um, fishing, swimming, surfing, walking. Look. But how big's the um, uh, the Bay of Fire? Is it like, it, like it stretches quite an area, doesn't it? So it goes from Binlong Bay. Yeah, and to, it's to what? What did you um, say? Eddy to... Stone Point. Right. Okay. So, it, well, but look, none of it's that big, but it is. Look, the actual place itself is so unique. It it's, is. It, it is glorious. And look, because one of the things that sort of got me about Tasmania, if, if you probably, if you've listened to all these podcasts on Tasmania, you, the population mm. is so small. Mm. Like as I said, yeah. in St Helens, it's two thousand two hundred. Um, so everything's yeah. so unspoiled. Well, and I did, when we did drive up around um, the Bay of Fires, um, our friends gave us a little, or John gave us some little spots to actually drive into. So, you know, you can, there's the main sort of areas where you can stop and have a wander. But he gave us some little, um, yeah, as I said, spots and you take the road and you go down a little bit and you find some people sort of camping on you know, like around the beach area and, and, yeah, so we sort of wandered and we just saw, like, you've got the, the white, white sand, the the blue water and then these, you know, boulders with this hot orange colour, you know, and and sort of trees sort of hanging over the water as well. Like, it was just spectacular. I was really, I just couldn't, as I said, couldn't stop taking photos of it. Just absolutely stunning, wasn't it? And you're there by yourselves. There by ourselves. There's no yeah. one else there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So sure. look, there's another. There's another. I suppose attraction you could call it. Um, it's only, there's a waterfall, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, there's a yeah. waterfall. It's uh, San Columbia. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's not. Um, so, no. So yeah. it's not Columbia. So Columba Falls. It's only about a thirty minute drive, and it's a ninety metre fall. Now, quite, and it's actually in or close to Bayan Ghana. And now, Bayan Ghana Dairy Company, um, they say they've They're got the some cheeses, of the, right? Yeah, they've got the cheeses yeah. and they say they're some of the best cheeses in Queensland. So you can go and uh, do Not in Queensland, in Tasmania. <laughs> Tasmania. So, so you can um, go and do the hike yeah, if and you then want go to the and waterfall the and, and do the cheese tastings up yeah. there. Yeah, Although we didn't do that, um, I'm sorry we didn't because yeah. I think that would have been another. But we were still, we only stayed there in, in uh, St Helens overnight. Yeah. Um, but look. Between the game, you know, being famous for its game fishing and famous for its uh, the seafood and also the nature and there. the Bay of Fires, sure. look, definitely worth an overnight. Well, we well we said that we'd go back and stay there. I remember, and a lot of people go from St Helens to inland from there to a little town called area called Derby, and that's where they have some of the best um, mountain bike tracks in in Tasmania. We've got some friends that go there every year to, to do that. It's not our thing, but that's where you can you can head from St Helens inland to do that. So in the town itself, it's quite bustling and busy, you know, and you do see the vehicles with the bikes on the back. Yeah, and, sure. You, you know, like there's people hiking too. There's a lot of, you know, backpackers with their hiking gear on. It's it's a, it's a real little hub, isn't it, that, that St Helens area. And then there's obviously people that just have their motorhomes and they're just driving around to find the, you know, you can back up and open your doors and look over the beautiful, um, the Bay area and the rocks and that sort of thing, can't you? St George's Bay. Or George's Bay, which, you know, St George. Yeah, I think once you get there, you're not going to be confused which one it is because there's only one there, so. Yeah, but what it's called is um, the thing. But, you know, because it is so beautiful, they probably sainted it. Did they, did yes, they, that, yeah. that can, canonized. <laughs> is that the word canonized? canonized so, yes. Is there anything else you want to tell us about um, Binalong Bay and the Bay of Fires? No, we've, we've covered everything. No, you I want think. To do. Um, uh, but you can stop along all the way along, and little there's little stop areas that you can stop and have a look, and 
uh, wander off the road a little bit and take lots of photos as as I said I did so yeah go and go and check out the, those photos on our website after our amazing meal in St Helens and our day exploring the, the Bay of Fires and the, the little town area we then got up and we were heading our final destination was uh, Freycinet and Coles Bay which we'll tell you about in a little while but on the way we went uh, to Bichano. Now, Bichano, St Helens to Bichano is um, oh, 75 kilometres, so it's not not too far. Um, nice Just and, enough time to buy a coffee in Bichano. Yeah, but you know, we're quite um, yeah, exactly. It's it, it's a good it's a good little stop, and obviously scenic, beautiful um, along the way as well. But we went to Bishno, yes, to, to have a little stop, buy a coffee, have a little explore because we'd heard um, some really nice things about this little town, hadn't we? So um, it's what you're going to tell you about the blowhole in a minute. But what, when we got there, was it was just, um, you were quite um, yeah, happy, look, weren't we? Yeah, no, Bishno, again, just another beautiful, beautiful, untouched yeah. Uh, coastal town on the yeah. east coast of Tasmania. Just magnificent. Total population, 950. Okay. So, again, you know, it's, that's a pretty constant throughout yeah. all the podcasts that we've been saying. Uh, look, the history. Yeah. Uh, coal was discovered in 1848. In uh, 1854, the harbour yeah. was extended to provide port facilities for the coal mining Mm, okay. At Denison River. Denison River, okay, yeah. Uh, the coal was transported to the port via a five kilometre horse drawn tramway. I bet you that didn't last long. It was short lived <laughs> with the discovery of gold in Victoria. Yeah, so they all. Um, they so basically, yeah, off they all, went. The, all the residents, they departed, they yeah. went to search for gold, so yeah. in Victoria. But now, though, it's. um. You know, it's a, a pretty famous area for fish and chips, isn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously. On the being, water. Being on the water and yeah. that sort of thing, so the fresh fish. So, yeah, yeah. Um, fishing is the lifeblood of the town with substantial quantities of crayfish, abalone, scallops and trevally. Um, many tourists enjoy the fish and chips at the waterfront near the boat ramp. It's making me hungry I and, and I haven't even had breakfast yet. <laughs> uh, there's also um, visitors are also attracted to the little penguin colony yeah. on adjacent uh, Diamond Island. Now, you can either walk or drive there. It's not far. No, um, but that's one of the things people say going to Bishano to see the penguins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you basically Another go spot. to Red Bill Beach. Yeah. It's about a 10-minute walk. Uh, to Diamond Island, so um, obviously mm. depending on the the tides and that sort of thing, um, but you've just got to be careful over there. Um, they say you're best off to walk on the rocks, mm -hmm. so that you know you're not standing on uh, penguin um, colonies. Colonies, you know, yeah. they're, they're, they're little houses. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure what they call them, <laughs> little, houses. little houses. But you know where they live, where colonies, they're, they're yeah. rocks or yeah, they're rocks. <laughs> Um, but yeah, apparently, uh, we didn't try that, but, um, cause we weren't there at the time mm. that they would have come back from there. Yeah. They come uh, back every night from the sea. Yeah, yeah. From the sea. Yeah. But they say that that's beautiful. Yeah. And, uh, but yes. But what we did go to see was the blowhole. Leanne had this idea that she just wanted to go and see this blowhole. Anyway, and, and look, it is impressive. Well, it's not just me. It's, you know, most people know Bishano for A, the penguins. B, the seafood, and C, the blowhole. So, um, yeah, I wanted to. It's just um, out of town. Yeah, look, it's um, at the end, the southern end yeah. of the Esplanade yeah. uh, in Bichino. Uh Look, basically what happens is obviously the water comes in from yeah. the ocean. It doesn't have to be too rough. And it hits inside and there's a hole in the granite. Yeah. And it just jets the water out. And uh, it's very impressive. Lyle's yeah. just done um, the hand signals of that, and yeah. I, I wish if I had. Here, <laughs> if you were here, you'd understand it, uh, but you're not. So I'll, uh, uh, Lance, I'll have to maybe look at film videos. Just take the opportunity to take the piss, well, but no, that's okay. I just love the way it just the water just shot out like that. That's yeah, I'm I'm that's amazing. Um, but, but Leanne, to give Leanne credit, she did get some great videos. I did, and yes. also the photos, some beautiful photos. Yeah, the photos are on our website at beachtrawine.com. Um, episode 
48 and yeah there's videos on on instagram as, as well i got it just as it as it came out i thought i did pretty well actually the one the photos on the website there's nothing there's a little bit there's a bit more and then there's the whole bit i think i did a, like a, a pretty good snapshot of of that um so if you love blowholes bishino is a great place to go however my favorite part of bishino Yes. Was the Farm Shed East Coast Wine Centre? Yeah, that's now that's right in clever. town, yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, well, actually, it's on just as you start to drive out of town, and um, it's open daily from ten to four. Uh, it's twelve dollars for five tastings. Uh, excellent venue for tasting East Coast wines from small wineries because not all the wineries have tasting salad rooms. doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, from a range of local vineyards, it's great if you don't have time to stop at lots of wineries on your trip. So, mm -hmm. you know, that I, that's a must um, uh, yeah. as, as long as you've had breakfast first, yes. I would imagine. Uh, but that, yeah. It's a great idea though, isn't it? A fabulous idea. Because so, I mean, so all the wines, as I said, we haven't, I keep saying in all the stuff I say and do, we haven't had a bad Tasmanian wine. Ah, no, so, no, no, you know, no. you're not going to be you're not going to be sorry, and, and you're supporting the smaller local um, growers as well. Yeah. Now, when we left um, the lovely Bichino and we left the blowhole behind, uh, we only had to travel about 16 minutes to Frassine Vineyard. Now that's open seven days, and it's open from ten to five. Look. We love Frasne wine. Mm. Um, our one of our favourites is Wine Glass Bay, mm. the Sav Blanc. Um, yes. Now the mm. Jeff and Susan Ball mm. cleared the site in 1978, planted the first vines in 1979, establishing the first commercial commercial winery of the east coast yeah that's pretty cool yeah yeah now um the the current sauvignon blanc 2022 which is the wine that Leah and i particularly love um mm. their aim was to showcase the fruits purity of wine class bay wine so, glass bay yeah which is often described as a reminiscent of gooseberries passion fruit and lychees yeah see i love passion fruit and lychees and i wonder i love it yeah yeah, yeah. so <laughs> yeah. um so that's that's a yeah beautiful wine and and one of the others that isn't too far away was another favorite of ours wasn't it like devil's corner that's, yeah um, and we so can what's get your that. favorite devil's corner i think it might be pinot gris pinot gris but we can get devil's corner wine here which is which is nice you don't have to buy it online you can actually go to uncle dan's and get get devil's corner which i'm pretty happy about but yeah and like yeah. and that's amazing too it's only 10 minutes from um from Bichino. yes uh, so you've got these world-class quality wines mm. that like are just so close now that their their uh, cellar door is open from 10 to 5 it's open seven days um you can pre-book a hosted tasting or a premium tasting in the devil's den the premium guided tasting uh, taste six premium wines it takes about 45 minutes 25 bucks mm. and i think that if you purchase wine that can come yeah, you know you yeah. get that back but you can do your own like a little tasting paddle yeah, too, yeah you can you? do a tasting paddle and that's about 30 minutes that's 18 bucks mm. uh a hosted what, wine th 30 minutes for six tastings i think that's obviously you know would take us a lot less than that <laughs> Yeah. sorry go on yeah yeah yeah, yeah okay yeah, yeah. and then you've got a host you've got a host of wine tasting yeah that's about 45 minutes that's 20 dollars yeah and the wine and, and chocolate, chocolate yeah the wine and chocolate one yeah. okay uh mm. four wine pairings uh it's self-guided i'm mm. not sure what that means self-guided but anyway <laughs> now that's 45 minutes and 35 dollars i'm assuming that'd be with um I mean, you do it yourself. Beautiful, but it'll also be with their red wines, I yeah. would say. Or the, their sweet wines to go with the chocolate. Yeah, yeah so, so they pair it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. Devil's Corner yeah. Cellar Door opened December 2015 after a huge renovation with new iconic viewing platforms. Yeah. 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 Um, so the backdrop, you know, overlooking the, the, uh, the beautiful Frassinet. Peninsula and the lagoon now. Yeah. I think it's Malden Lagoon. Yeah. Look, oh, unbelievable. Yeah. 
and beautiful wine, you know, like that's um, yeah. So definitely worth a visit to to those two um, to those two wineries. Well, yeah. on the deck you, yeah. they've got the, their restaurant there, which is open from ten to four. Yeah, is called Fishers. Uh, try their uh, freshly opened oysters oh, or it. delicious mussels yes. straight from their partner Frasnay Marine Farm just down the road at Coles Bay. They've also got fresh fish and they do a great burger. So we yeah, yeah perfect. All so if you're gonna <laughs> if you're gonna go to Devil's Corner, you've got to time time it so that you can have, have lunch. lunch there. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Next on our little journey uh, today was. Uh, we were leaving Bichino and the wine area there to travel about just uh, around 40 kilometres, not that much, on a beautiful scenic drive, uh, to Coles Bay, which was, is the main entrance into Freysenay National Park, where we were spending um, a couple of nights and actually my birthday. So it's, um, yeah. It was. Yeah. So Coles Bay is on one side. And then you drive through and and uh, into the national park, yeah. And we were staying at the Freysenay Lodge, I think it was called. Anyway, yes, let's, we were. Yeah. So let's tell you want to tell us a bit about the um, Freysenay. Look, Freysenay. Look, how do I describe it? <laughs> well, Freysenay National Park is 169 square kilometres, so it's only about the tenth of the size of Cradle Mountain National Park. It's not huge. But it is so scenic. You've got the um, the Hazard Mountains and the the waterway on one side, which is a bay, and then you've got the surf, which is you know smashing on the other side, and you've got the lookouts that you can go up to and stuff. So anyway, you go, you describe it. I won't get going. <laughs> Look, it's um, I, I just couldn't believe it. Even from when you drive over the hill down, you know, through Col Coles Bay, yeah. The view, it's that's Oyster Bay. That's the Great Oyster Bay. They so, call yeah. it. So you, yeah. So you drive down and there's a little you, town at Coles Bay. Yeah, yeah. And you just, shops and but stuff. the view just of as you come over the top of that hill mm. of the bay is just amazing. And then you drive. Well, we stopped uh, there and, and we could see our accommodation on the other side. Correct. We just yeah. see, sort of see the roofs in well, amongst what, the trees. What we was hoping was our accommodation. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, and as it turned out, it was. Look, uh, how do I? How do I do it? I can't do it that justice. Um, well, the this is the national park. There's yes. a, the national park there. The park is best known for the stunning beauty of Wineglass Bay. Mm. Uh, and, it's and crystal that's... clear water and curvaceous white beaches. Yeah. And the curvaceous, I know you probably sound like that's a bit of a wank, but that's what it's like. Yeah. Um, yeah. The diversity of the coastal landscape is dramatic it with is. rocky coves yes. and surging surf around one corner and sheltered bays and mm. sandy beaches around the yeah, next. Yeah, which is sort of what I said. And, and from that, our accommodation, we could we could see one of those beautiful bays going. Yeah, that, well, that, well, that was Oyster Bay. Yes. Uh, the Hazard, a spectacular granite mountain range mm. that rises dramatically from the sheltered turquoise bays Yes. Providing breathtaking views and breathtaking views, you've got no idea. Now, the, there's, there's uh, following a 31 kilometre long trail, the Frasnay Circuit walk takes in many pristine beaches over two or three days. Walkers can also be challenged by climbing to the top of Mount Frasnay, which is 620 metres. Now, yeah, that, so that's the thing, you know, people do go there to hike, um, you know, the, the different. Um, tracks, of course, um, and there's a couple of luxury resorts in which we were staying in one. I think the most popular walk is basically up to the Wine Glass Bay lookout, lookout yep, yeah, yep, which is the correct. one we did. Yep. Um, and on the way, there are quite um, a lot of vantage points where you can stop and, and take in the views. And um, most of the way, you're actually stop and you're looking back towards Coles Bay, um and oyster bay um yeah so until you get to the top that's right so but it's just you're not sort of everyone's sort of thinking about the wine glass bays where you want to go and look but actually as you're going up looking back down over oyster bay is just as beautiful yeah sure yeah, absolutely yeah really nice and um it's sort of one way up and then the, the track splits i think sort of about that's halfway correct. up isn't it and um we got up to the the lookout 
um, the wine glass bay lookout. Yeah, they yeah. say that the actual total walk should be take between about one and a half and two hours. Yeah. The day that we went, yeah. unfortunately, it was very, very windy. Yeah, it was so windy because what we planned to do was walk up to the lookout and go down the thousand odd stairs to actually get onto Wine Glass Bay Beach. Yeah. And then rather than walk back up those stairs with my old war injury, we were going to this little track you can go across um, to the uh, other side and there's a water taxi um, picks you up. And so we'd worked out what time that was going to pick us up and we're going to do our walk. But it was literally gale force winds and they, there was no boats going out no. anywhere that day. And you, if you go and have a look at the stories on our Instagram at Beach Travel Wine, you'll see um, there's a video of just how absolutely windy, you know, it was at the top. I was actually quite nervous. Um, there's sort of a, a viewing platform and you, people sort of walk along and, and do a bit of a loop up the top at, at the lookout, don't they, and come back. And I just, I quickly did it. I was, I, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit of a scaredy cat anyway. Um, but I had to see the the view from up there, which once again there's photos of that on their website, which are just beautiful, aren't they? Yeah, like uh, how can I, the, the only thing you can describe hmm. the views from that lookout are just wow. Yeah. It's yeah. just incredible. I, it's almost, you know, you're almost speechless on how beautiful it mm. is. So, um, but coming back down, even you know, I I actually enjoyed the the walk back down because it took another bit of a track, and you you just sort of yeah, the beautiful, um, you know, the the bush and the the scenery, yeah, it, yeah, really really beautiful. But there's a bit of a sad thing about Wine Glass Bay. Yes. Didn't, like Lyle asked me this earlier and I wish I didn't know. And How did Wine Glass Bay get its name? Yeah. Okay, let's see. In the early 1800s, there were whalers and sailors working and living in the area. The whalers would set out in small boats from the shore to chase and harpoon passing whales. Before towing them back to shore to be butchered, Whenever this happened, the bay would turn red with blood, like red wine in a glass. Yuck. Now, that's what the legend says. <laughs> uh, I Even when I read that, I thought, oh, that's a bit yeah. untidy, uh, especially because it's such a beautiful, beautiful yeah, area. Yeah, they probably don't want people knowing that. So well done. We've, we've okay. shared that with, with 70 so, different countries yeah, yeah. around the world. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Frassinet was declared a national park back in 1916. Okay. So they recognised how beautiful yeah, it was. Yeah, how beautiful it was then. And, and seriously, it is, if you're going to go to Tasmania, I'd put it way, way up near the top of the list, yeah. if not at the top of the list. Now, the place we stayed... Which... I was going to say now, let's talk about where we stayed because we did, we did sort of um, splurge a little bit because it, it was my birthday. 25th birthday, was it? Yeah. Anyway, was it's, and... We so, stayed at Fresnay Lodge. Beautiful, beautiful. We spot. had a premium spa cabin. We did. Now, um, and so that when you walk in, you know, you've got uh, immediately you've got views out on your little deck to Oyster Bay. It's called, yeah? yes. And then right. um, part of the room to the off to the side is a lovely, great big sort of bathtub, and with sort of a huge window overlooking the. Um, the bay as well so you know i i said i think instantly i'm certainly going to be having a sav blanc in in there um, yes you did <laughs> well, interesting it was quite funny because it was Leanne's birthday and and um uh yes. it was it was, was going to be our spoil uh anyway i decided i was going to get an upgrade and um uh to 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 these rooms and when i rang i i said to them um you know i'd, I'd like an upgrade for two nights on our book and told them who we were and i said how much is that and they said three hundred dollars and i said oh that's not bad and they said that's per night yeah <laughs> anyway so but, but the was, rooms the rooms were yeah as beautiful. nice as we've ever stayed yeah, in, was, anywhere in the world yeah it the was, view was fabulous. And as it turned out, after we came down from the walk, the, remember it started to rain mm. and we thought, wow. Yeah, we can just sit here and enjoy ourselves. Yeah, yeah. and just enjoy sitting, mm. watching the rain. And it was just fabulous. The amenities were as yeah. good as you'd get. 
And then um, they had a mini bar there. Yeah, okay, we got, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but we, the, it rained for a little while and then the sun came out and just in time for us to head down to happy hour and out the back of the restaurant area of the, of the resort, they have a huge deck um, and stairs where you can walk down to the bay if you want to. And, you know, we found a little spot out there and, and had a glass of wine. And I got some absolutely stunning photos and videos of the sun setting over Oyster Bay. Like there's some of my favourite photos that I, that I took in the whole trip. Um, but there's a that we, we were there two nights, so we, we went to both places, didn't we? Yeah, they've yeah. got a little, like, cafe, I suppose, bistro, mm. well, more a bistro, mm. which is called Richardson's. Yeah. Um, the food was great. Yeah, yeah. Fabulous. Then the following night we went to... Yeah, the, the Bay Restaurant. Mm. Um, and once again, I, they had like a selection of oysters, which I got a photo of, which were just, you know, pretty little flowers on them and everything. That was gorgeous. Yeah. Look, look so, it's certainly not cheap. No. But You I'd don't go say, there for cheap, lot. Yeah. I, what I was about to say is that for value for money, mm. put it this way, I wouldn't hesitate to go back yeah, there. It yeah. was just magnificent and what they they've got a couple of special things in the restaurant mm. um they've got a host uh, let me just read this hosted food and wine tasting mm. uh, it's 80 dollars per head and it's uh six wines uh spend the afternoon sipping superb wines from vineyards across the east coast discovering the history behind each drop and savoring perfectly paired canopies. Yeah. Why didn't we do that? The reason we didn't do that is because we didn't know. They also do a, a Tasmanian tasting, uh, finish your day exploring the Frasinate Peninsula with a self-guided Tasmanian wine, whiskey or gin tasting overlooking a great oyster bay. Yeah, it sounds great. Yeah. 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 But, and I think just that gives you a bit of an idea of what's around what, it. what how actually classy and beautiful and glamorous to stay at this place was mm. um well can i just tell a little story before we finish on on Freysonet lodge would that be okay you got anything else i you know want to what you're gonna say <laughs> so um when we went to check out um uh, of of uh Freysonet, Freysonet uh, lodge yeah. Freysonet lodge that's correct we uh, went in to uh, pay the bill yes. and I said to the lady, uh, we we only had, because the, the mini bar was just full of, you know, goodies. goodies. And, um, you know, I, we didn't want to eat. We, well, we did have, we'd already eaten at the restaurant and stuff, but we were trying not to eat too much. Of it. I think we had like a bottle of champagne when we first got there yeah. after a walk. But I think the little thing. chocolate bars and we might have had one of those each or something. And, yeah, I, yeah. and I said to her, this is what we had. Um, you know, I was waiting for her to, to add that to the price. She said, oh, the, the mini bar was free, everything in there you, you could have had. And so we'd had two days of, if I'd known that, I would have had my pockets full. But anyway. Well, we, yeah, either that or we probably wouldn't have enjoyed the restaurant because we would have been, you know, probably had a few too many. But look, the, yeah. yeah. Freysonet National Park, Freysonet Lodge, Coles Bay, Oyster Bay, all that area, You def and the wineries around there. You know, do yourself a favour. I think the population, again, in Coles Bay is about 395 people. Yeah, definitely worth a, um, a visit to this gorgeous area in Tasmania. So as we wrap up our podcast today, um, you know, I hope you've in, enjoyed. I've certainly enjoyed going back to these places and, you know, everywhere we talk about it, it just makes me want to go back and spend more time. There isn't there isn't a place that I wouldn't like to go back to and um, in Tasmania and we definitely will because you know if you if you love scenery, if you love um, seafood, uh, other beautiful food, nice wine, you just you can't go past Tasmania. I don't think. No. Is that right? Correct. Correct. So as we say every week, we're in this part of our little road trip from in St Helens through Bichino to uh, Freycinet. Where was your favourite place to have a wine? Everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. Uh, are we talking lunchtime or are we talking sunset? Does it matter? Well, yeah, it does up. because... Why don't you leave the sunset to me? Okay, okay. So for lunch, my favourite place was Devil's Corner. Okay. Beautiful Pinot Gris, beautiful food, beautiful outlook, spectacular. Yeah, okay. Well, I've got two, um, but the one I'm going to choose is... Uh, but my favourite food was in St Helens. 
So that almost so makes me want to okay. choose the wine because of the view and, you know, the, the food there. And, um, yeah, Good point. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was just, yeah, gorgeous. But I'm going to say um, at Freysonet Lodge on the, the deck at the sunset for a few reasons. It was my birthday and I felt very spoilt. And it was very romantic. It was romantic. And I just, as I said, I got some beautiful photos and I just enjoyed that, that whole experience, you know, even though we were road tripping, it still felt like we were living the high life. It was very, yeah, it was, it was a very nice evening and, and very nice wine. And, you know, I just loved the whole outlook of that. So thank you for that. No, it's my absolute pleasure. What, what gonna... is it? It's uh, El Gusto Es Mio. Yeah, what are you going to do next? You find... So you've got to keep, you got to keep lifting the, Raising the bar, sunshine. Yes, yeah. I do. Uh, <laughs> yes, I do. I just think the only the, the only disappointing thing was um, not realizing that the, the mini bar was the free. mini bar was free. Oh, so, man. well, it's I mean, not free. You pay for it, but sure. Anyway. But I mean, it doesn't matter how much you travel. You still, you know, muck things up, don't you? It's quite funny. Yeah, yeah. but like seriously, yeah. As Leanne said, Tasmania is spectacular. So uh, if you'd like to see the pictures I've been talking about um, or just read a bit more information, um, I do show notes with every episode and, and put as many photos in those show notes as I can. So if you head over to our website at beachtravelwine.com, uh, episode 48, or there is a, a button at the top of our website now that just says Tasmania, and if you click on that, that will show you all the different um podcast and show notes that in in this series but this particular one is episode 48 um and feel free to reach out on instagram at beach travel wine and tell us where you've been in tassie we'd, we'd love to hear wouldn't we darling yes we would and next week next week's episode or uh coming up was all about the the bottom area of tasmania um through the tasman arch and to, down to our stay at Port Arthur, which does involve more food and more wine, surprisingly enough. Let's hope so. Yes. All right. So until next week, it's uh, adios from me and... Hasta luego for me. Bye. Bye.